Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman and today I want to tell you about four plants to plant in your fall gardens. If we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So it's fall and I absolutely love my fall garden because there's a lot of color back here that only comes into play in the fall. Now I know at this time of year a lot of the annuals are kind of petering out and a lot of the color from summer is gone but there's a whole new burst of color uh, that we found a way to get in my landscaping and in my fall garden that I'd love to share with you. So I'm going to show you four of my all-time favorite flowers and a good time to plant them is now in fall. So if you're watching this and it's springtime no worries because you can also plant each of these flowers and plants in springtime. So one of my all-time favorite plants in a fall garden is sedum. And this is called Autumn Joy Sedum. And it's a fabulous plant because it has this beautiful burst of red blooms in fall. But what's really cool about this plant is when it first comes in, these gorgeous red blooms are green. And before the blooms come in, like in summer, they'll start giving you these gorgeous stems that almost look like they're succulents. So the leaves on this stem that come out in like, like late spring, early summer. It almost looks like you're growing succulent plants in your garden. So it's got three totally different looks at three different times of the year. So it's really like a really beautiful look in your garden from late spring, early summer, all the way to the frost. And this plant is drought tolerant. So once it gets established in the ground, it's super no fuss. And we've been having this plant come up year after year. This is a, once again a perennial and it gives like a beautiful long lasting vase life flower also. So if you want to cut these and bring them into your kitchen, put them in a vase of water, they're going to last for weeks and they actually dry out really beautiful also. Another thing I love about this plant is that it's a pollinator attractor. So the butterflies love getting the nectar from these flowers in the summer and then the birds love coming in here and they love picking off the seeds in the fall. So it's a really great plant to have if you love watching wildlife or if you have small kids that you want to share all these beautiful animals with out in your garden. It's a really cool plant to have. And while we're here, I want to show you another one of my favorite plants and it's right in back of me. And it's ornamental grasses. And ornamental grasses come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. And they're just super beautiful, especially in a fall garden. And a lot of times people will leave their grasses up, their ornamental grasses up, through the winter because it provides really beautiful interest in their landscaping and it looks gorgeous with some snow on top of it. A lot of people will also leave ornamental grasses intact because it provides a lot of coverage for animals and birds and it just looks really beautiful in your garden. So you can either prune them back if you like in late winter for a really you know more tailored look in your garden. You can also do this in very early spring or you can just kind of leave the plant alone and then cut it back in uh, early spring. But it's a super super low maintenance plant. Once you get it in the ground and it gets established that's it. I don't fertilize my ornamental grasses. I usually don't even prune back a lot of them. Some of them I'll just kind of leave intact and then let the new growth kind of take over. Other areas in the garden I will prune them back because it's a little more I want more of like a like a manicured cleaned up look. So I want to show you what some of my grasses look like around my landscaping. And once again, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Your best bet is to go to your garden center and check out the types that they have available uh, now in fall because you can see them kind of like in full bloom. And also make sure that you choose a type that's a perennial if you want it to come back every year. There are some ornamental grasses that are annuals. So if you want to make sure that you have that, uh, that plant come back every single year, make sure that it says perennial and they come in dwarf sizes that are super small and they also come in super super tall sizes so make sure that you're looking at your plant tag when you choose your grass to see if it fits in your landscaping or in your garden plan and i love these guys they almost look like feathers and these are terrific in flower arrangements i have some more over here that are actually hiding an electric box i want to show you but here's the tall grasses that are hiding this electric box. Can you see it? There it is. 
Now, once again, I have to kind of cut back some of these tall grasses because they grew a little too close to this electric box for my comfort. So I'm gonna cut them back because this should also have a lot of space around it. But aren't these beautiful? And the colors are just magnificent. This is another favorite plant of mine. It's called burning bush. And I love this plant because it turns red in the fall. So in the springtime, it's gonna wind up being like a beautiful green color. The leaves come in really gorgeous and beautiful and lush green. And then it stays this beautiful red color all the way up until like the first frost. So this plant is deciduous, which means it's gonna wind up losing its leaves in the winter, but it does make for a really gorgeous hedge. So if you wanted to have like almost like a blocker for your property or some sort of like a natural fence, burning bush is terrific. Just keep in mind that it will lose those leaves in winter, but it gives you this beautiful, beautiful burst of color in fall. And it gives you that beautiful lush green look in uh, the summer months. So it's super easy to maintain. Uh, it doesn't get much disease. You can prune this plant back in case you need to kind of keep it intact for your landscaping, but know that there's also some dwarf varieties that actually only get a few feet tall. So if you have a smaller spot in your landscaping or in your garden, you're probably better off going for those dwarf varieties. But if you want that big giant impact, then you can go for like a regular size burning bush. Another reason why I love this burning bush plant is because the birds are in here every morning because there's tons and tons of berries in here. So in the fall, this plant produces these gorgeous little seeds, these berries, and the birds are in here every day. So it's like a really beautiful sight to see. So once again, if you have kids or grandkids, or if you just enjoy watching wildlife, then you can come out here and check this plant out in the morning and you will be amazed. So the last plant that I'd like to talk to you about today is Limelight Hydrangea. And if you've been watching this channel, you'll see that we have a load of videos based on hydrangea care and Limelight always comes up because it's one of my all time favorite hydrangeas to grow because it's super easy. This is a hydrangea that comes back year after year uh, with blooms every single year. And you don't have to worry about pruning at the wrong time of year because the blooms come in on what's called new growth. So this is a super reliable bloomer. And what happens is the blooms start off in this beautiful creamy white in summertime. And then in fall, they turn this gorgeous green and maroon color, and they make for a terrific semi-dried flower on the stem. So if you're gonna use this flower in your garden, I'd suggest using it more so in the semi-dried form because it's gonna have a much longer vase life than if you cut them in summer when it's in that white poofy form. Limelight hydrangeas look terrific in your landscaping and they also look terrific in your garden. And one of the key features of a limelight hydrangea is they have these colossal flower heads. So take a look at this flower head right here. I mean, it's gotta be about, I don't know, 12 to 14 inches long. It's just gigantic. And if you prune these back in late winter, early spring, the flower heads will be even larger. But to keep a smaller look, a smaller flower head, you can just not prune the plant back at all and you'll get these more delicate blooms that are still pretty large. Well, this plant, normally now the tags on the plant when I first bought it said it was gonna get between six and eight feet tall. But I have to say this plant is tremendous and I've got a whole bunch of them back here and some of them, they have to be at least 12 feet to 15 feet. They're just tremendous. And this plant here is probably about 10 to 12 years old. So when I first got it, it was much, much smaller, but it just, it, it just bloomed so beautiful and it's so gigantic. And I have another one back here and you can take a look at the size of that one. And once again, they get really colossal. So when you're planting them, make sure you have a large enough area for this plant to get. But there's also dwarf varieties. There's a variety called Little Lime and there's a variety called Bobo. So if you have like a smaller spot in your landscaping or in your garden and you want to enjoy uh, a limelight hydrangea, go for the bobo or go for the little lime. The flower heads aren't going to be quite as colossal, but they're still beautiful and so easy to grow. So thank you so much for joining us in this video and please feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification and please let me know where you're viewing this from in this great big beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week and please continue to have those flower questions and comments come in below because they help me come up with new videos to help our flower tribe grow better flowers in their own gardens and I will see you in the next video.